Good morning. Today we're going to look at section 1.3, Introduction to Excel Spreadsheets. There are a couple of features that I'm going to want to show, how to do basic arithmetic, absolute and relative cell references, how to do named references, getting help from Excel and from Google, and note the ways that Excel does a number of things that are different. The first thing worth pointing out are some features of the text. In a section like this, we're going to be using Excel, and there will be a lot of Excel spreadsheets, and trying to just know what to do by looking at a printed page of a spreadsheet is kind of cumbersome. And so there are two sections worth noting. One is an unworked worksheet that you click on the link, and it pops up an Excel spreadsheet that has a basic so you can follow along but still fill everything in. So it's not just something static, but it gives you where things start out and how to set up the problem rather than having to type everything in. The other link is the link to the worked worksheets. Things will look very similar, but you'll notice that there are more things filled in in the worked worksheets because it's set up so that you see the end product of the worksheet that I've been doing. It's often useful to be able to go back and look at a worked out worksheet for, with Excel to make sure that you understand what's going on. The other feature worth noting is when we get to examples, this book will have links to YouTube videos of the example being done. Today we're looking at doing some of the examples in section 1.3, Introduction to Excel Spreadsheet. I like to add the closed so caption so you can Excel. listen to what's we're going, going to on. start by going through and you can look at the worksheet. I find it's useful to have... I have a version of the worksheet where the... the video going through. So if you want to see the details of producing the examples in the text, you can follow that. So those are just features of the text that attach to the text are files that you may want to look at and use those files. So we're going to start with basic arithmetic and rather than simply redo the worksheet, I'm going to start with a fresh Excel worksheet and talk about things one could do. And there's the basic arithmetic. I'd like to be able to take Excel and if I have three and four and five, I'd like to add it up. Well, there are a number of ways to add it up. I can say three plus four plus five and Excel will work like a calculator and compute the answer. The feature worth noting is that I start with an equal sign. That tells Excel that I want to do the computation. If I click on a cell, notice it's going to fill some things in. We'll get to that in a second. If I wanted to see an entry that had an equal sign, I'm going to start with a space equals 3 plus 4 plus 5. And since it starts with a space, Excel thinks that's text, and that let me see what's going on. One of the things that's useful as we're playing with it, and I'll turn it on and off a number of times, under the Formulas tab, there is a Show Formulas, which shows what the formulas are underneath. When looking at a worksheet, it's nice to be able to see all of the formulas. Well, I'm going to make some copies. And what I just did was a quick fill. I highlighted a section, moved my cursor over the little box in the corner, clicked, held, and dragged. And that says, reproduce things. And when I'm looking at formulas, what I'd like to do is to add up what's in these cells. So I'm going to say equals C4 plus D4 plus E4. 
And notice when I have the cells in, the cells that I'm referring to are highlighted and colored so I can make sure that I've got the right cell reference going. If I go back and look at it, it's changed my lowercase letters to capital letters because that's how Excel formats things. I'm going to show my formulas again because when I did quick fill, I just reproduced numbers. But if I reproduce formulas, it's taking these functions and it thinks in this cell here, so in cell F4, C4 means the things that's three to the left, D4 is two to the left, and E4 is one to the left. So when I copy the formula down, it's going to look at cells with the same relative position. These are called relative references. One of the things worth noting is rather than typing, if I have a formula going and I click on a cell, it will produce the formula for me. So I'm going to click on the cell. It will produce the formula. And so this gets me doing arithmetic. I might want to do something where I'm going to use not the cells, but a range of cells. I want to add up a range of cells. If I click and drag, let's try again. I'm going to click and drag, and it's going to give a range of cells and say sum. Pause for a second. One of the other things of notice to note is if I do quick fill and I've got a sequence going, it's going to look at this and say, not that I want to copy four and five, but I'm starting at four and continuing that same pattern. One needs to be careful because if I'm copying, notice it thought the first thing was a number, the next thing is a formula, so it's going to be alternating numbers and formulas. This is something that sometimes confuses students when they're building out stuff. All of the things I've done so far are with relative cell references. I now want to look at absolute cell references that if I'm going to do a payroll and I have a pay rate that's the same for all of the, the people, so everyone's getting paid $12 an hour in this job, and then I'm going to come up with hours name hours pay Fred Mary Sam John and one worked 40 hours, 30 hours, 25 hours, and 45 hours. What I would like to do in this case is take the number of hours times the pay rate, and Excel will compute that for me. But when I'm looking at it and completing the formula, if I drag down in the next cell, I'm going to want C7, C18 times D14. What I do for that is I put a dollar sign in front of the 14, which says that shouldn't be considered relative, but should be considered absolute. And now when I drag my formulas, notice that C17 turned into C18 but D14 remain D14, which I'm going to want to do if I want to compute the pay rate for all of these people, the pay. I have the hours which are relative to the people, but then I'm paying $12 an hour, so that I want in all of the formulas. 
and I wrote the formula once and then copied it down. Another feature that can be done is the mindset of Excel is we'd like easy to understand formulas. So one of the things I can do is I can name this cell. It's right now D14. I'm going to name it pay rate. And having it now when I want the formula for the pay rate, I'm going to say I want the hours worked times pay rate. And it's going to keep pay rate there. It's going to compute the formula the same thing. The difference is when I'm looking at a spreadsheet and I come back, C17 times D dollar sign 14 and D dollar sign 14 is pay rate here. I can follow it through and figure it out. But if I'm told it's just C17 times the pay rate, that's easier to understand. I would like to make my spreadsheet set up so I can follow and understand if I have to come back. The idea of a spreadsheet is you should be able to come back to it six months later and understand what you're doing. If I want help, there are two ways to get help. One is, of course, Excel has a help formula. And I'll do something like named reference. Get help on named reference. And defining and using names in formulas, it will tell me how to do that. The other way is to remember that we're in the age of the internet. So Excel named references, Excel named reference cell, define and use names. There's the help from Microsoft. There's help from other people. I find the other help I get is often cleaner than the stuff I get from Excel. But remember when you're having trouble, look it up. It's worth noting there are some ways that Excel does math differently than the rest of the world. That's towards the bottom of this section. Getting help, other defaults. So ordinary arithmetic, plus, minus, times, divided by, and raising power. There are a lot of commands for ordinary arithmetic, so sum, product, quotient. Sum is the one that we mentioned. The order of operations, it's worth noting that Excel does it differently than everybody else. If I say minus 3x squared, normally you would think this is minus 9, because it's minus times 3 times x squared. Excel looks at that and says the negative operator goes through, and so it should be minus 3 squared. So if I'm looking at minus 3 squared, Excel is going to tell me that's 9. And what I really mean, because Excel interprets it as minus 3 quantity squared, and every other math class you're in will interpret it as equals minus three quantity three squared because the square goes before the negative sign. Excel just does things differently. It's to the point it's used enough that it's a feature. There are other mathematical functions that so square root, log, natural log, and exponential. Two worth noting, E is a special mathematical number. It's not in Excel except as exp of 1 and pi is equal to pi open close parentheses. So we had e and pi there as special things. Those are the features in section 1.3. Once again, make sure you can follow along and 
see the videos doing the example, the explicit examples that are in the section. That's quite useful to pull up the worksheets, the unworked worksheets, and follow along as it's being done. So rather than passively watching, follow along.